It's William here, the Bangkok voice coach, and it's not very long since I looked at Ventro con mio diletto. In fact, it's just a few days. But somebody sent me this and they said, you have to see it. And the reason is, it is of course the same aria sung by the same performer, but it's four years later. It's 2021 and it's at the Palace of Versailles and look how his interpretation has changed. And not just confidence in front of an audience, but confidence in handling this music, which he now knows inside out. He is living the music. out of time uh, he is pulling in across the bar line and he is jazzing it up essentially now isn't that brilliant because baroque music is pre-classical it's pre the structures of Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven when things became more rococo and more formed and who is to say this is not exactly how singers of this day would have sung. When you think of Farinelli, the great castrato, do you think he sang everything straight? I highly doubt it. He was a pop singer of his day. He improvised, he embellished, he stretched things around, and Orlinsky is right. And this is why he has legions of fans, because he's actually really sensual with the music. And he has found a way of getting right inside it and making it his own and bringing it to life. And this is really, 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 really clever. Actually, those are written in those swings. They're across the bar line. It sounds like crazy by like Patsy Cline. Well, Willie Nelson. It's all swung across the bar. So essentially, Vivaldi has written in the jazz style. And what Jakob Josef Orlinski is doing is really just furthering that so that it sounds all a little bit swung and just improvise the secret to any kind of musical interpretation is to seem like you're making it up as you go along and the same can be said for actors actors need to work 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 on their lines so that when they deliver them they sound like they're just coming to them at the spur of the moment this is the future of keeping this kind of music alive and i'm not surprised he has such massive fans and people are right he's charismatic and he is innovative it's 
very interesting how his interpretation has grown so much since that first time when he sang it at the piano in Aix-en-Provence. Of course, it was never written for the piano accompaniment. This is how it should sound. starts back again and it? it just seems to kind of kind of growl a little bit and the way the strings are playing it just hangs in the air like that and of course it's astounding in that room See what I mean about making it up as you go along, and this is the embellished um, repeat of the opening section. Is ornamented by the singer to show not just his skill at musicality and technical skill, but also to show that he knows how to give more emotion to the repeat of the first section. Well, what's the point in doing it again unless you add to it in some way? And of course, these arias are all about emotion. And that is why it is extraordinary that for many, many decades, we listened to Baroque music and it was sort of emotionless and academic and chaps with little round glasses who had studied the original partita or who had been to the British Library and had seen the original score and reconstructed the parts. Yes, it helps that the notes are accurate, but it doesn't necessarily bring it to life. And this man does. And I think there hasn't been as big a star of Baroque music since Farinelli and the Castrati of the day because he has everything. He has the looks, he has the intelligence, he has the modesty, but he also has the charisma and he manages to put into his voice all of himself. Now the Castrati, they did that because their voices didn't break because they had a certain operation done before their voices broke and then they remained high. But this man is singing with a falsetto voice, but he somehow managed to engage it to his body a lot more than you usually hear, a lot, lot more.
Yes, he really engages with his eyes and his mouth. Uh, you will see that everything's forward and open, showing quite a lot of teeth, which is great because a lot of singers pull down their lip here in order to make the sound, but he's not doing that at all. And as a result, his sound is a little bit more open than a lot of opera singers. And that also could be authentic. He's not a 19th century opera singer, and he's not trying to sing with that technique. He's singing more with a technique that sounds like a jazz singer. I just want you to listen to the response. This is an audience who will absolutely get what he's doing. He's standing up, not just because it's a famous aria and it's the song that made him famous. He's standing up because he can do Standing up because they love him. They're standing up because they love him and because what he gives them is pure love. He loves the music, he loves singing, he loves the audience listening to him. He is so comfortable in his own skin. Yes, he's singing an octave higher than men are expected, but he doesn't care. He just says, this is the way I want to sing. And if you like it, please come and listen. And this is what is working so beautifully. And he's reinvented this music. He's brought it to a really wide audience. I didn't know this aria before. I don't want to hear anybody else singing it. Thank you very much. This is definitive. And I really love this guy. He seems to be bringing something really new and really charismatic and He's got great people around him, and he's also managed to retain this beautiful modesty. Thank you very much, Jakob Josef Orlinski, for giving us your beautiful art. It's William here in Thailand. See you soon. Bye.